Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel and also for the earlier videos, you can go to the playlist section and you can check as per your convenience. Now, in today's session on regional planning and development, we are going to learn about the topic that is planning for sustainable development. So what is the concept? of sustainable development and why it is one of the most important topics in terms of regional planning. So let's discuss but before we go ahead don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand this planning for sustainable development. So before we go into regional planning and aspects of development here, first of all, let's understand one point that non-uniform growth or non-uniform economic development over space is a commonality. Commonly, growth or development is not uniform over space. And this is the prime requisite for sustainability concept. So some areas have more development, some areas have less development. And in the earlier lectures, we have already talked about that how do we measure these kind of development through various qualitative techniques, quantitative techniques. So this uneven pattern of development over space necessitates that planners have a spatial perspective, locational analysis, aerial differentiation, systematic worldview. All these concepts are important for the planners to look into these development through these lenses and stride for sustainable regional development. So if you observe carefully, sustainable development takes care of ecological, social and economic aspects all together. So this is an integrated concept, multidisciplinary concept, isn't it? So if you observe the sustainable development goals, all the 17 goals here, right from no poverty, no hunger, good health, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, very important, then clean energy, then you have jobs, then you have infrastructure and innovation, then you have reduced inequalities, very important in today's world, then you have sustainable sustainable cities and communities, then we have responsible consumption, protect the planet, life below water and also life on land, then we have peace and justice and then we have the global partnership. All these 17 goals that if you observe carefully are integrative goals, multidisciplinary goals where one has to be linked with the other, where balance between economy and ecology has to be taken care. Isn't it? So that's why in sustainable regional development as well, sustainability is the keyword. So if you observe carefully that this is concerned with growing opinion of the world community on environment versus economy debate. And this was highlighted when, when United Nations, if you remember, World Commission on Environment and Development, WCED, was headed by Norwegian Prime Minister Gro Harlem Brundtland in 1987. So, Gro Harlem Brundtland, who was one of the youngest person and first woman ever to hold the Prime Minister's office in Norway, she was heading it. And this is when in 1987 comes the idea and the conceptualization of sustainable development. So if you observe, what was it? The commission gave its report known as Brundtland Report and under which the theme was our common future in 1987. What did it mean? It meant that everybody should think that the whole world is a family rather than only looking inwards towards themselves as individuals and not caring about others. So our common future, it means common future of the entire planet. That's very important. So the report defines sustainable development as development that meets the need of present without compromising the needs of future generations, right? So this is talking about intergenerational equity and intragenerational equity, the principle of equity, fairness in the allocation and distribution of resources within the generation and also between the generation. So these were the basic ideas. Now, if you look carefully that there are certain principles for planning for sustainable development. So the first principle is work in harmony with nature, work in sync with nature. It means do not go against the principles of nature. So land use and developmental activities must respect. The key word here, the catch word here is must respect and preserve biodiversity as well as protect and restore essential ecosystem services. Now, this is 
living in sync with nature which is very important and also in happiness index we talked about this integration hybridization of economy and ecology now if you observe the second principle of sustainable development in terms of regional planning is livable built environments now remember concept of future cities we talked earlier livable cities we talked earlier sustainable cities we talked earlier so what are these it means we have to make environment conducive livable for ourselves right the location shape density mix proportion quality of development should enhance fit by creating physical space head adapted to the desired activities of human beings right so that's how communities would be encouraged to live in peace together with nature so next is place-based economy now it's very important that whatever is the characteristics of the place this should form the part of major economy it means local economy should strive to operate within natural system limits so for example waste discharges if you observe carefully this example waste discharges should occur no more quickly than nature can assimilate them it means simply what that how much waste are, are we generating is it being assimilated and converted to soil by nature so are we going beyond the adaptive capability of the nature it means carrying capacity that is very important word here carrying capacity of nature has to be taken care that's how we should plan our place-based economy then if you observe equity principle we talked earlier as well so principle of equity is when land use pattern should recognize and improve conditions of low income populations alongside the higher income population it should not be lopsided right so here environmental health and human dignity should be given priority equitable access affordability and availability of resources remember these are very important so eradicating poverty and accounting for the needs of the disadvantaged the exploited right so these kind of people have to be integrated into the system that's where equity will come handy then what is important is polluters pay principle remember polluters pay principle is whoever pollutes must bear the cost of pollution so culpable interests are very much important and community should work towards it that if you are having an industry which is creating pollution you must pay for it and you also must ensure that this pollution is not harming others by using technologies isn't it so that's where polluter space principle comes into and then you have the sixth and the last principle for sustainable development in regional practices is responsible regionalism it means not just talking about yourself don't be selfish right don't talk about your own region development rather than integrative development so communities should not act in their own interests only rather than they should account for consequences of their action on others as well for example if you are throwing a garbage in a river and you are assuming that it is not harming others no it's a world system remember a river is flowing into ocean and then microplastics are getting deposited with time so it's enhancing the pollution in ocean and then leading back to you in terms of climate change so this is ecological principle of cyclic pathways nothing is static in the system everything dynamically comes back to us so if you observe sustainable regional development here settlement water resources power supply social infrastructure environment public transport economic activity all are integrated in the system so this is a systems approach to understand sustainable development so these are the basic principles and then management efforts of environment encompasses two approaches and i'm sure you know this first approach is preservative approach it means what deals with management of environment without any kind of interference so no interference completely preserved is one way to look at it but it seems unrealistic as well in many cases then there is one way where judicious usage of conservation approach is very important it emphasizes on human adjustments with the physico biotic environment in relation to its techno behavioral institutional arrangements its usage in judicious manner so this is conservation approach this is one of the two ways of management then if you observe here for planners for regional planners for developers there are two approaches of resource management as well in terms of regional planning and development and these are either holistic approaches taking care of the entire structure or only looking into monistic approach it means talking about the contextual problem defined problem and their solution in a given context so this can be approach and then there is a scholar called jeff 
lifer who gave the methodology to undergo this process of planning. So the first step is identification of common agreement on goals and objectives. Then second step is research and development and finding the issues and challenges. Then we have is identification and evaluation of the alternative modus operandi. That is there any alternative method to apply this particular plan and implement it. Then we have the implementation and selection that is the specific strategy for a particular development of a region and then finally when implemented what do we need to do constant monitoring and feedback so this is the structure that is followed while planning for regional planning and development for sustainable regional development and sustainable regional development through ecological conservation can be achieved by certain ways what are these ways so look here so creating natural reserves then national parks and sanctuaries and biosphere reserves as we know india also has several of them then protected locations for endangered species for example project tiger scheme in india as we know then formulation enactment and implementation of law very important and effective measurement of endangered species population so here census animal census count is very important right then research to study biological behavior of animals spreading environmental awareness among common people these are the steps for planning sustainability in a region that's very important so as we go towards the regional economics regional ecology and integrating them together it's very important to look into these particular steps and at last i would leave you with a thought that greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it this quotation by robert swan so what does it say always remember that you are as important as anyone else so take it on to yourself do as much as you can do for the environment if you really are looking towards sustainable living so that's for the sustainable development sustainable regional planning and development so now when we have discussed the various aspects of planning for sustainable development sustainable regional development in the sessions to come we'll be talking more about the other aspects of regional planning and development so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the videos with others as well